Construction is one of the biggest sectors of employment globally, hiring both formal and informal workers that offer expert services as construction engineers, operational engineers, technical advice, interior designing, electrical and water engineering, and telecommunication, among others. However, some of the construction firms that once boomed are now under receivership. The, in, in the construction sector is uh, being taken over by the foreign firms. Uh, there are a few old construction firms, uh, infrastru infrastructure development firms, still surviving, but only barely. I don't believe they are adequately protected. Uh, for example, what happened in Spencon is, is, uh, is a unique case, but if, if we had some protection, we could have saved this hostile uh, predatory attack from ECP. Spencon, once a vibrant and largest construction firm employing over 5,000 people at its peak with projects across seven countries, is no longer heard of. Patel explains that the firm's engagement with a U.S.-based private equity firm contributed to its dethroning shape with a debt of $15 million by early 2014. Uh, what we realized, unfortunately, very soon after they became shareholders, is that they were looking uh, at competitors from South Africa and Middle East, and they were packaging the company for sale uh, without our knowledge. So behind our back, they were looking for buyers for our company. So we came to know later that this is what they were doing. Although the private equity involvement contributed to Spencon's collapse, Patel insists the influx of foreign construction companies into East Africa has brought misery to the resident companies. So all these projects were stalled. Uh, once they, I mean, once they took over slowly, they, they started stalling and then uh, eventually they got handed over to the Chinese to finish and some of them I think got terminated as well. Our analysis is that the EIB took little or no action to say Spencon when we actually requested um, for the bank to do so, and that it costed thousands of jobs and the loss of a major um, in, um, employment force in the region. The once flourishing company's collapse at the hands of private equity firm leaves a number of questions unanswered and calls for vigilance of investors before receiving funds from private equity firms. The fact is um, that the, um, the, the, the link between CDC and, and ECP um, is clearly a very problematic one and is clearly one that deserves a lot more investigation, a lot more looking into. So this is one case that will probably need um, a cross-border approach between Uganda and Kenya, you know, to bring to bring some sort of justice to the creditors, both in Uganda and Kenya. We know that the creditors in Kenya include the employees who are never paid. At its peak in Uganda, Spencon executed a number of projects in road construction and plumbing, among others. But as of now, its assets are under receivership. This has compelled directors to raise voices to Ugandan authorities to save the company. The executive director of public procurement and disposal of public assets, Benson Turamie, advises Spencon managers to seek guidance from relevant authorities. The bailout of... Uh Collapsing companies is, is, is a bit, a bit, uh, maybe I, I would say it is outside our mandate as, as PPDA, but it could be a mandate of Ministry of Finance. There are several protection initiatives government has put in place to guard local companies from competition. Restricted is essentially for